Okay, so today you can see we are at Alp Duez in the Cessna 152 and we're going to do some flying around just to show that you can operate out of Alp Duez in a Cessna 152 if the weather is nice. So to ensure that we're going to come into the, the weather menu and we're going to improve the temperature outside because you can see it's going to touch on zero. So we're going to improve it to 22 degrees, we're going to move the month to July or August even. So we're going to get a nice summer afternoon with few clouds in the Alps at Alp Duez. So if you're not, if um, you're hearing the name Alp Duez and you're thinking that rings a bell, let's have a look at it on the map. If we go and clear the map up. So this is Alp Duez and you will have heard its name as part of the Tour de France. It's one of the famous climbs so you can see the road coming up the mountain here. So it's one of the haute category climbs, which means it's kind of off, you know, there is no category for it. It's off the chart steep. Um, so we're going to fly off uh, 240 degrees, do some flying around in the valley and then come back in and land. So you will notice straight away when you're flying in valleys like this, you have to use the instruments a lot more than normal because you have no ground reference. So we're going to be using the vertical speed. We're going to be using the compass and the altitude or altimeter and the airspeed and perhaps more than anything else the artificial horizon because you know we have no ground reference so if i come off the wheel brakes you will notice the plane starts rolling straight away because the runway is inclined so when we land coming back in this way we're going to be landing uphill so we're just getting speed up as fast as we can go flaps one and then just hold it steady off the end of the runway. Don't try and climb like crazy. We're, we're trying to get airspeed more than anything. So just enough elevator to keep the nose up. And we're watching the vertical speed and we remove the flaps now. So we're keeping 240 degrees on the compass. We're watching the artificial horizon. Obviously you'll see the landscape rotating if you're turning, you know, sort of spinning around you, which gives a good indication. But the artificial horizon, obviously, if you did fly into cloud or mist or anything, would give you a much better reference. OK, so I'm now starting to climb slightly. So we're going to do a left turn in a moment. Now, remember we're in the mountains, so we need to look around. Look, we need to climb a little bit first. If we did a coordinated turn here, we'd probably end up hitting that peak if we did it level. So let's go and pull the nose up, go for a thousand feet a minute, just for a little while. Get a little bit of altitude, so maybe come up to six and a half thousand feet, and then we'll begin our turn. We've got to keep an eye on the speed, so we can't maintain a thousand feet a minute in the Cessna. We won't quite do it, especially as we're already at six thousand feet. So let's start turning. which is still climbing 500 feet a minute. It's a long way down into that valley, isn't it? So while we're making the turn, should we have a look down there? It's some um, crazy steep. So there's the climb look, the Alp d'Huez climb from the Tour de France. So we can be careful to avoid these hilltops. There's the runway. So we're going to come around to 60 degrees. Go, we'll do a circuit past the runway, we'll come along the edge of these cliffs, back out over the valley, and then back in. So we're coming around to 60 degrees, so we have to be careful of these hilltops. We're going to come past them quite happily. So yeah, you really can see that climb is just insane, isn't it? If you go and look on YouTube and find clips of the Tour de France of Alpe d'Huez, you'll see the various famous cyclists going up it and making those crazy steep turns on the way up. Okay, so we're maintaining 60 degrees, we're maintaining 500 feet a minute, we're still climbing. So we can see the airfield there, 
it's just a very short runway so you need to make sure on the way in that you just keep checking airspeed, altitude and that your target for where you're going to put the wheels down is in a sensible place. So I'm going to turn 90 degrees here. So if I come out to 330 on the compass and straighten up. Fly out over this hilltop. It's leveling out slightly. The plane's wanting to climb as it gains airspeed. So I'll trim that out a little bit. This plane's quite sensitive to trim. Okay, let's start the next turn. We're high enough to avoid this hilltop. Returning to 240 degrees, which if you remember was the direction of the runway when we took off. So there's the runway over there. We're just giving ourselves enough room to turn back in easily. There's the hilltop that we're just clearing. Turning to 240. Okay, so we can have a look around there. Unfortunately, Flight Simulator hasn't really got really good controls to move your head around with using the mouse. You obviously you need virtual reality to do that, to be able to, to lean around the pillars easily within the cockpit. It's a bit of a shame. I mean, they've got the space bar, which lets you move your head up and down. But there's no, you can't kind of push your head up against the glass easily to see behind you. Okay, so should we start making our turn? So I'm going to come back to 50% throttle. being able to sit up and down in the chair is helpful. So we can see the runway out there. So it's not a major issue to turn in. So we remember it's 60 degrees for the runway direction. some drafts from the hills, that's the plane being kicked around. So we're just turning in, back to 60 degrees. Overshot slightly, but nothing too serious. Okay, so now we're going to be watching our airspeed and looking at the angle of the runway to us, so it's just the geometry of the runway, because there's no ILS or anything like that. So you're just keeping an eye on it. And watching the speed as well. So we can go to flaps 1. Ten degrees flaps in the Cessna 152. So we're maintaining 80 knots and we're descending nicely. So again, landing at runways like this is just all about feel, really, and knowing 
what the aeroplane can do. There's a little bit of practice involved, but not much. So I'm now going to slow down. Go for the next level of flaps. Remember we're going to be going uphill, so the speed will come off very quickly, and we're down. Now one thing that's quite curious here is if we slow down a little bit with the wheel brakes, pull the flaps up now, if once we turn off the runway, this is very very steep downhill in this scenery, I'm not sure it's entirely accurate, you'll see what I mean. I'm going to have to hold the wheel brakes on. Let's, because I'm not going to be able to stop otherwise. So I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> the crazy thing is we won't be able to get back to the runway without getting a run up. We'll have to get some momentum because the plane won't climb, or you know, won't pull hard enough to pull itself back up onto the runway from this car park. So I'm going to put the wheel brakes on. And that's the end of the demo. So this is Alp Duez. We're actually doing a group flight with um, the uh, virtualflight.online group tomorrow night. So, sorry, not tomorrow night, on Wednesday night. So what's the date today? Let's have a quick look. Today is the 12th, so on Wednesday the 14th of April. If we go and have a look in the website. So I haven't got a browser running, have I? So if you go in your browser and head to virtualflight.online you will see VF009 is the flight number. On Wednesday the 14th of April we are doing a group flight. So a whole gang of us are going to arrive for 8 o'clock in the evening in the UK. So 7 or uh, sorry, seven o'clock in the evening or 1900 hours, Zulu hours or... Um, uh, universal time, I think some some people call it. So eight o'clock in the UK, we're going to meet up at Alp Duez and do some practicing of those approaches. And yes, it will be fun, and people won't kind of you know follow the rules, and it'll be a bit kind of um, chaotic, but it'll be great fun. So if you want to come and have a look at the Virtual Flight Online website, do come and have a look, and you can see about flying online. So voice communication during the flight will be via Discord, if we go and open Discord quickly. So if you, all the information is on the website about how to join Discord, there's a joining link. If you're already a member, you can click it and it will just take you to it anyway. So we just say accept the invite and it will say continue to Discord or open the Discord application and open it comes, give it a moment. We'll see it appear here in a moment. Famous last words. My computer's chugging a bit, isn't it? taking a moment to open it. Did it actually open it? Let's go and have a look. I put it up. You've got two copies of it now, haven't I? Yeah, it was just going slowly. There we go. Oh no, I've now <laughs> managed to kill both of them now. Yeah, so if we go and look at Discord, there we can see it. And we use the voice channels here in Discord to talk while we're flying. It's all covered in the website, actually. So if you go to virtualflight.online and look in Flying Online, it talks about all the subjects you need to know about. So seeing other aircraft, if you're flying using Microsoft Flight Simulator, it just works. You just have to be on the West Europe server, which we is in the flight notes, actually. So if you go back to the front of the website and look in there, you'll see it tells you if running Microsoft Flight Simulator, connect to West Europe. Um, if you run any of the other simulators, we run JoinFS, there will be a hub set up called Virtual Flight Online. So that's on Wednesday night. So if you want to have some fun flying around Alp Duez with a whole gang of other people and learning and laughing and having a chat, more of a social than anything, come and have a look at virtualflight.online. And hopefully it will be as smooth as the flight that I just did and possibly not though. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how we go. Anyway, I'm going to end the video there.